Hello. It has been a while. I started a new job and had to take some time off to get up to speed at my new job. I'm kind of up to speed at my new job, so I can start dedicating some time to videos. However, it should be noted that given that I now have a full-time job, I don't think I'll be able to put out videos every week, but I'll try my best in terms of a, some sort of regular cadence, figure it out along the way. And with that said, in today's video, I like to go over code coverage in Rust. Alright, so just like usual, before we go into what code coverage is, we should define it. And to help us define it is Wikipedia. Code coverage, otherwise known as test coverage. In computer science, test coverage is a measure used to describe the degree to which the source code of a program is executed when a particular test suite runs. A program with high test coverage measured as a percentage has had more of its source code executed during testing, which suggests it has a lower chance of containing undetected software bugs compared to a program with low test coverage. All right, so summarizing what they stated here, test coverage is the measure of which the lines of your source code are executed while running your test suite. And in terms of measurement, you typically measure this in percentage. And uh, some of the reasons why you want to do this is, as they stated here, a program or software with higher test coverage suggests it has a lower chance of containing undetected software bugs. And that's mainly because you're touching those lines. So if a bug did exist, it would most likely or have a higher chance of presenting itself while you are touching those lines. And in terms of Rust, how would you go about doing something like this? Well, they're usually testing um, coverage tools that you can use, and Rust is no different. We have Cargo Tarpaulin. And I'm saying Tarpaulin really, really weirdly. At least it sounds weird to me because I've never actually said this word. I always call Tarpaulins tarps. Just a thing. Anyway, so this is a tool to do exactly that. Um, and they have some caveats or warnings here. They say, one, it's designed to be a code coverage reporting tool, which we just learned what that was. But they also say that it currently only supports Linux, 64-bit. Um, but you can run it in Docker. And um, in, if you have any CI or continuous integration tools, they have instructions down way at the bottom. Let me go down real quick. Right here. So in terms of continuous integration services, they have instructions on how to set this up with whatever you're using for the most part. I believe this one is Travis. And then down here, they have GitHub Actions, Circle CI, GitLab Pipelines. Not exactly sure if that's a thing. And they have Docker instructions. Anyway, there are many ways for you to try to run this, and there are many places where you can put this into your, your testing pipeline or reporting pipeline. Going back to the actual tool. Alright, so if you want to install it into your Rust environment, you can do cargo install and then the name of the tool, which is fine. I already installed it. Um, and then in terms of today's video, I'm going to test this out on the request crate, just messing around with it, just because I needed a big source code blob to run test against. And they already have it, so cool, using that repo. Alright, so I've opened my terminal, and I'm in the request repo, or directory, because it's my computer. And let's just run the coverage tool, see what it gives us. But you run it via cargo in the full name of the word. And since I've ran this a few times, it's not going to compile the code, which is one of the largest portions of time in terms of running this. I already have a build that it can just use straight out the box. And that's what it's doing. It's running the test. And this could take a bit. 
All right, so it's finished running the test. At the bottom, you can see some general outline statistics. You see lines covered or by percentage. Then you have lines covered, which is here. Um, here's the chains, which is doesn't really mean anything for us right now, mainly because I've been running this a few times on my own, and it seemingly just compares the last run with this run, regardless of while ignoring the different configuration options that you passed in it. Um, so as a reminder, we ran this just plain, no flags or anything. And this is what it gave us. And if we scroll up, we may notice a few things. One, blocking has zero lines covered. And I think there are a number of other things in here that have zero lines covered. Uh, WASM has zero lines covered and there's a reason for that the reason being is that those are features and those features need to be built as well so if we go to cargo tarpaulin help we see many different options here and the second one will allow us to build all of the features and test everything within those features given that those features have tests so let's do that now and see how things change All right, so the all features flag is finished running and we can see there's a lot of changes at the bottom line. One test coverage went up from like 40 something to 70%. Lines covered also naturally increased because the percentage increased and they correlate. Chains doesn't really mean anything to us now because we didn't do an incremental change, we just ran more tests. Meh. Uh, we can see that there are some files here that probably shouldn't be covered and we can exclude them but as of right now I don't want to do that just because they're minimal in terms of lines it looks like 8 15 maybe Meh. but let's look through this going up we see that WASM still doesn't have any tests which probably means it doesn't have any tests that can be ran in this fashion or this manner but blocking now has test coverage at least some so we can see like 69 here 112 lines 100 percent there 128 lines so things have changed so in terms of test coverage one of the things that people use it a lot for is to um, have a certain like mile marker of how well tested their code base needs to be and if code coverage ever dips below that PRs or a pull request or maybe even commit would fail and the way people go about doing that is having a like a fail under a certain percentage marker so as we see here this current is the current percentage is 70.93 right so let's go to the help if we look at where is it ah there it is fail under fail under takes a percentage and then we can pass in a percentage to say if it's not there if we don't have not met that percentage, fail. And if we have met that percentage, pass. So let's run that and see what it looks like. Fail under, let's say 80%. All right, so it finished running. And as you can see at the bottom, we now have an error. And it actually uh, exits with an error code. So if you had this in your pipeline, it knows to fail in terms of creating a PR or actually committing a PR and things like that. Um, and to see what it looks like when it passes, let's set this to 60. All right, so the tests have finished running and you can see now, um, given that the coverage percentage is above 60, we just had a regular output at the end. Um, one thing I would, would like to touch on is if you're in an environment where you are writing code and your PR fails because you're below a certain test percentage, one of the easiest ways to figure out what lines are not being covered is to look at the output of the test coverage. And not necessarily this output, but if we look at the help, scroll up, right about, where is it? Oh, there it is. 
So here we have a dash O or dash dash out and it allows you to choose the output format that you want the report to be in. I typically go with HTML just because it's easy for me to read and I can open it in a web browser. So let's do that real quick. All right, so that finished running. And if you do a ls real quick, you can see that by default, the HTML files at the top level you directly with that name. And let's open that real quick. Make that bigger. So I find this weird that it starts from my home path, but whatever. Here we go to requests. Didn't do anything with examples. Here's the source code. We can see that red are, I guess, just below a certain line, a certain percentage of coverage. This one has zero, so it's red. This one may be less than 50 or 60 to find red. I am not sure about that. Blocking and async implementation are orange which I guess means a decent amount of test coverage, and then green is seemingly when you're in very high test coverage, so 192% is there. So if we click on, let's go with this one, right? We can see the files in it, and let's click on one of these files, go with body. So one thing you can see here is that green lines means your tests um, ran these lines, and then red lines, this is probably a mistake, it did say exper experimental, but red lines typically means that your, your test did not cover these lines. Here, I think it's a mistake mainly because it's a match statement and everything within the match statement has been ran. Meh. Don't trust it 100%. Just know that it'll give you a general guideline or area. It'll give you a general idea of how much coverage you have. Green, 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 red, red. Oh, um, also something to note is that if it doesn't have any color, then those are things that aren't expected to be tested and thus are not counted in your lines to cover um, output. So yeah, like I was saying, if I am writing tests and I need to figure out what lines I have not covered in my current test, this is what I typically do. I just open it up look at what lines are red and then try to cover those and then run it again and see if they're covered now. All right, so let's go back. One last thing I wanted to go over was how to exclude files. So if we come to source code, we see that WASM isn't being tested here at all. And there's probably a reason for that. I do not know what the reason is. I'm not part of this team. Um, but again, let's figure out how to exclude it just because. Ooh, that wasn't the command I wanted to do. So we go to the help and right here, exclude files. Exclude given files from coverage results has star wildcard. So seemingly interprets globs. Um, we can try this out real quick. Uh, for something to compare against, let's look up at what the previous results were. We had 70.93 coverage. And then running that same command, we don't need the output. Let's just exclude, exclude files. There we go. And it's source, wasm, put a star. All right, so the tests have finished running. As you can see down here, test coverage went up, mainly because the lines uh, for WASM are no longer counted against us. And one thing I am curious about, because I haven't tried it, if I want to exclude multiple different types of files outside of doing globs, can I just put another one here? Like, is it a list or do I have to do this each and every time? And let's figure that out now. So, 
let's exclude nah not async let's just, let's exclude blocking Close blocking stuff and the tests have finished and that seemingly worked cool so just to recap um if you want to exclude multiple file paths, you can. You can just add them as a list to exclude files. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit like, subscribe. Outside of that, peace.